1 Chronicles chapter 9. So all Israel were reckoned by genealogies, and, behold, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, who were carried away to Babylon for their transgression. Now the first inhabitants that dwelt in their possessions in their cities were, the Israelites, the priests, Levites, and the Nethinims. And in Jerusalem dwelt of the children of Judah, and of the children of Benjamin, and of the children of Ephraim, and Manasseh. Utai the son of Amahud, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Bani, of the children of Perez the son of Judah. And of the Shilonites, Asaiah the firstborn, and his sons. And of the sons of Zerah, Jewel, and their brethren, six hundred and ninety. And of the sons of Benjamin, Salu the son of Meshulam, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hasanua. And Ibneah the son of Jeroham, and Elah the son of Azi, the son of Mikri, and Meshulam the son of Shepathiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah. And their brethren, according to their generations, nine hundred and fifty and six. All these men were chief of the fathers in the house of their fathers. And of the priests, Jediah, and Jehoiarib, and Jachin. And Azariah the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Merioth, the son of Ahitub, the ruler of the house of God. And Adaiah the son of Jeroham, the son of Pasher, the son of Malchijah, and Masai the son of Adiel, the son of Jazra, the son of Meshulam, the son of Meshulemeth, the son of Immer. And their brethren, heads of the house of their fathers, a thousand and seven hundred and threescore, very able men for the work of the service of the house of God. And of the Levites, Shemaiah the son of Hashab, the son of Azrikam, the son of Hashabiah, of the sons of Merari. And Bakbakar, Haresh, and Galal, and Mataniah the son of Micah, the son of Zitri, the son of Asaph, and Obadiah the son of Shemaiah, the son of Galal, the son of Jedithan, and Barakiah the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, that dwelt in the villages of the Netophathites. And the porters were, Shalom, and Achab, and Talmon, and Ahiman, and their brethren, Shalom was the chief. Who hitherto waited in the king's gate eastward, they were porters in the companies of the children of Levi. And Shalom the son of Kor, the son of Abiasoph, the son of Korah, and his brethren, of the house of his father, the Korahites, were over the work of the service, keepers of the gates of the tabernacle and their fathers, being over the host of the Lord, were keepers of the entry. And Phinehas the son of Eleazar was the ruler over them in time past, and the Lord was with him. And Zechariah the son of Meshelamiah was porter of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All these which were chosen to be porters in the gates were two hundred and twelve. These were reckoned by their genealogy in their villages, whom David and Samuel the seer did ordain in their set office. So they and their children had the oversight of the gates of the house of the Lord, namely, the house of the tabernacle, by wards. In four quarters were the porters, toward the east, west, north, and south. And their brethren, which were in their villages, were to come after seven days from time to time with them. For these Levites, the four chief porters, were in their set office, and were over the chambers and treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged round about the house of God, because the charge was upon them, and the opening thereof every morning pertained to them. And certain of them had the charge of the ministering vessels, that they should bring them in and out by tale. Some of them also were appointed to oversee the vessels, and all the instruments of the sanctuary, and the fine flour, and the wine, and the oil, and the frankincense, and the spices. And some of the sons of the priests made the ointment of the spices, and Mattathiah, one of the Levites, who was the firstborn of Shalom the Karaite, had the set office over the things that were made in the pans. And other of their brethren, of the sons of the Kohathites, were over the showbread, to prepare it every Sabbath. And these are the singers, chief of the fathers of the Levites, who remaining in the chambers were free, for they were employed in that work day and night. These chief fathers of the Levites were chief throughout their generations, these dwelt at Jerusalem. And in Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon, Jehiel, whose wife's name was Maccah and his firstborn son Abdon, then Zur, and Kish, and Baal, and Ner, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zechariah, and Mikloth. And Mikloth begat Shemim. And they also dwelt with their brethren at Jerusalem, over against their brethren. And Ner begat Kish, and Kish begat Saul, and Saul begat Jonathan, and Malkishua, and Abinadab, and Eshbal. And the son of Jonathan was Meribal, 
and Meribal begat Micah. And the sons of Micah were, Peton, and Melech, and Taria, and Ahaz. And Ahaz begat Jara, and Jara begat Alemeth, and Asmaveth, and Zimri, and Zimri begat Moza. And Moza begat Benia, and Raphiah his son, Eleasa his son, Azel his son. And Azel had six sons, whose names are these, Azrikam, Bokeru, and Ishmael, and Shariah, and Obadiah, and Hanan, these were the sons of Azel. 1 Chronicles chapter 10. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard after Saul, and after his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan, and Abinadab, and Malkishua, the sons of Saul. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was wounded of the archers. Then said Saul to his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword, and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. So Saul took a sword, and fell upon it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise on the sword, and died. So Saul died, and his three sons, and all his house died together. And when all the men of Israel that were in the valley saw that they fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, then they forsook their cities, and fled, and the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And it came to pass on the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. And when they had stripped him, they took his head, and his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines round about, to carry tidings unto their idols, and to the people. And they put his armor in the house of their gods, and fastened his head in the temple of Dagon. And when all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, they arose, all the valiant men, and took away the body of Saul, and the bodies of his sons, and brought them to Jabesh, and buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh, and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his transgression which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit, to inquire of it. And inquired not of the Lord, therefore he slew him, and turned the kingdom unto David the son of Jesse. Acts chapter 27 verses 21 through 44. But after long abstinence Paul stood forth in the midst of them, and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve. Saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. And sounded, and found it twenty fathoms, and when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under colour as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat, and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, and gave thanks to God in presence of them all, and when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat, and we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore, into the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and hoist up the mainsail to the wind, and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast, and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. 
and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out, and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose, and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea, and get to land. And the rest, some on boards, and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass, that they escaped all safe to land. Psalms chapter 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth! Who hast set thy glory above the heavens! Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. What is man, that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man, that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honour. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, thou hast put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field. The fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Proverbs chapter 18 verses 23 through 24. The poor useth entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother.